Good evening. I'd like to call the Thursday, May 16th, uh, regularly, regularly scheduled uh, Berlin Select Board to order. To my far left is uh, Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith, Angelina Capron. With us also is Dana Hadley and Diane Isabel, and I'm Brad Town Chair. Um, additions and changes to the agenda, Dana? Uh, no, I have none. Uh, public comment. Hearing none, uh, Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. I've given the April budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax report to the select board. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is that sending tax bills this year might be a little bit different. Uh, because of the school merger, uh, we're get, everything's being delayed as far as I know right now. I mean, there's a lot of balls up in the air, and we're not going to know. Uh, more until probably in June. And so um, on June 25th, if everything goes as it's going right now, um, there'll be a vote, okay, and that would be all the districts voting for the school budget. And if that passes, then there's still a 30-day waiting period uh, that somebody could appeal. And if nobody appeals, then as of July 25th, potentially we could mail out tax bills. Well, normally we mail out tax bills by July 15th. So, um, and that's, this would be like the best case scenario. If the vote is not, does not pass, then I don't know what the next step is. There, like I say, there's other things that are up in the air that I'm not really sure of. Uh, for instance, we, uh, the taxpayers voted for August 15th to be the first payment date. And if I send out tax bills July uh, 20, 25th, that can't be. So, uh, like I say, as time goes on with every meeting, I should know more and more, and I will let you know. But if I send tax bills out late, that means the money will not be coming in as early. So uh, we have to really be careful with the money. I, we're in good shape right now, but it might delay some of the things that we plan We to thought do. we could wait a month on the flow that we have yes. as long as we don't make any major purchases. Right. And that would save us from having to take a anticipation of tax no we've not done that since right. I've been here yeah. Yeah, no, and uh, I'd like it to continue right but, I would yeah. too but but because we don't know and this is like I say it's just every day it seems like there's you know something that's happening we've but got keep you aware yeah we've also got a question before the attorney to find mm -hmm. out how that all works with tax sales and due dates mm -hmm. and yeah and, if if we ended know. up having to send like two in uh, two different tax bills which would be a nightmare to me but if that ends up being the case, then how does this all work right. as far as the tax sale, et cetera? So like I said, there's a lot of questions. And as time goes along, we'll have the answers, but one step at a time, I guess. Right. But I wanted to forewarn everybody that tax bills may not be going out by July 15th. Thank you. Okay. That's a report saying we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beware. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I've got. OK, thank you, Diane. Um, I make the motion that we accept the treasurer's report. Second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries. Um, see, uh, you're still going through the uh, bills? Yes. Um, Your first appointment, Brad, it's not Allison that's here, it's Eileen is here in her place. Uh, then somebody from down street. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So I'm Eileen Peltier. I'm the executive director at Down Street Housing and Community Development. And I'm really happy to be here tonight. Thank you for welcoming uh, <coughs> me to your meeting. And um, you probably have all heard that we are considering a project at the mall. Um, it's still quite early on, but we really, you know, it's really important to us to get to know the community and the select board um, throughout this process. So we had asked Dana if we could come just to kind of talk a little bit about who we are and if you, I will give you a very brief sort of, you know, understanding of what we know at this point related to the project, which is probably the more interesting <laughs> topic of conversation. But um, just wanted to spend, you know, maybe five minutes. I handed out some materials. I'm not going to go through all of them. You know, you can kind of get to know us. Are, are any of you familiar with Down Street anyways? No? <laughs> okay. Yeah, a little bit. Um, 
So we are the uh, affordable housing organization in Washington, Washington, Orange, and Memorial counties. Um, we have about 500 apartments uh, across the area of projects you might think of um, in downtown Barrie. On Summer uh, Street, our project is uh, the new one with the kind of yellow on the top. That's actually our offices, our home offices. Um, we are in the process of completing the, the housing above the transit center in Montpelier. If you come off uh, the highway there and you see the big construction project, that's ours. Um, so those are probably two um, larger projects of ours. And it's in thinking of scale of the project that we're thinking about in Berlin, it would be at least the size of our uh, project on um, Summer Street in uh Barry or really the transit center, either one. So kind of about that scale, somewhere between 30 and 40 apartments. Um, and so, so that is part of what we do. We're developers. We build buildings um, in communities um, in those in those three counties. Uh, we also run a home ownership center. Our home ownership center serves uh, people in our region with home buyer education classes. We also run a shared equity program which we have 165 homes in that program some of which are in Berlin um, it's essentially a down payment assistance program where we help um, low-income people um, get into home ownership by helping them with down payment and then we continue to work with them and, and help them steward the property so we kind of consider those homes we have 165 right now as part of our portfolio um, we also run a revolving loan fund for people who, who are not traditionally bankable. So if you're low income, you own a home and you have a leaky roof, you know, it can be really challenging to get uh, financing to repair that. So we serve that population um, with a combination of grants and loans. Um, so, um, and then we manage all of our properties, uh, which is something that is important for you to all understand a little bit about our approach to property management. So if we were to develop this building in Berlin, um, you know, we would be there. As I said, our offices are right down the hill um, in Barrie. Um, and we manage our portfolio of about 100 apartments. Um, and we use kind of a mission-based property management approach. Um, we've been very successful with that. Most of our properties have a mix of low income um, and higher income market rate units. Uh, we try to do that whenever we can. And I think this project in Berlin, we would be able to do that. We're actually hopeful that we will be able to get some funding. People remember the housing revenue bond that, that Governor Scott um, proposed uh, in 2018 and was passed, actually provide some funding to serve a slightly higher income level so people who are at the 80 to 120 percent area median income, so it, it gives a nice mix. Um, so you do have to pay rent to live in our properties. It's not public housing, um, so most people work. Um, you know, there are certainly people who have uh, Section 8 vouchers and are on disability. It's a it's a true mix of people in our housing, um, and we're very committed to providing uh, services for the people living in our housing. Uh, we were part of the group that started SASH, which is called Support and Services at Home. It's a program where we help um, function in essentially a care coordination way to help people um, access the services they need, but we also provide a lot of on-site things like um, SASH is primarily for Medicare eligible, so seniors and young disabled, so Tai, tai Chi classes, medication management, all those kinds of things. And um, that's actually a nationally award-winning program that Medicare actually pays for because we have been able to show that by investing in people in their homes, you know, working with them right there around issues like their blood pressure or medication or managing falls, that it actually saves healthcare dollars. So. Um, we're looking at expanding that program to the rest of our population in our housing, meaning our families um, and single individuals, which is a really exciting prospect. Um, and we'll be piloting that over the next um, year or two. So we have a deep commitment to not only housing people, but creating community because we believe that's what helps people thrive. Um, so a long time ago, we recognized that four walls and a roof are great, but they're truly not enough for many individuals. We all need um, more than just four walls and a roof, and one of the things we need most is community. So when we do real estate development, one of the most important things for, for you all to understand is that we don't come into communities and just do projects. We, the reason I wanted to come tonight is we want support from the community. Um, 
you know, um, and most of the time the community approaches us. Um, so, of course, I'm well aware of all the talk around the Newtown Center and all the work that you're doing with that. This Berlin Mall project has been kind of on our radar for many years. Um, and when we were first approached about it, our position was, this really sounds great, we're excited about what the town is doing, but we'd like to see somebody else commit to having someone live there. We just felt that getting our funders to invest in this project to be the first one in would be difficult. So pretty much the minute we understood that the Dusevichs were going to go forward with their project, we said, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, so we're thrilled that they're um, doing that project. We actually went and toured their project in Essex. I don't know if anyone has had a chance to do that. We had a tour of the building, met with their entire senior leadership, um, leadership team, and we were very impressed with um, the quality of the building and the services and, you know, got to meet several residents. So looking forward to, you know, what will be mm -hmm. the largest development <laughs> of housing in central Vermont. Um, so it's a big deal and it's exciting that um, it's happening in Berlin. So, um, so our goal with this project is to um, create affordable housing and as I said it will be a mixed approach and what we'd really like to do and this is a, a I guess maybe a little bit out there uh, hasn't been done yet in Vermont but we would like to build child care on the first floor. Um, so the first floor space wouldn't be housing. Typically, you know, you don't want to do housing when you're you got cars driving by on the first floor. Um, it would be a fairly substantial child care center serving probably about 60 children. So the need is huge in this area. We've talked with several child care providers. Um, I think again, it would be a mix of serving lower income and market rate. We're also going to be speaking with the employers in the area: Blue Cross Blue Shield, Central Vermont Medical Center, even National Life. You know, um, as you know, there are a lot of people working in and around uh, this area, so we think it would be an ideal location. There's transportation with busing; um, it's right off the highway, um, and it serves a really um, strong community need, so both for affordable housing and um, child care. So I'll just direct you to um, just to go page three where I talk a little bit about um, Vermont still has a housing need. Um, so Vermont, um, we do a lot of things really well and for a lot of reasons, partly because we're a rural state. Um, um, you know, we're in the Northeast and it's cold and uh, housing is expensive. Living in Vermont is expensive. We have the fifth largest affordability gap in the nation, meaning that's the difference between um, someone's average hourly wage and what they would need to pay. So um, that's pretty significant um, and that is within a structure within the state of Vermont where we actually have a very strong affordable housing network. We have close to 14,000 units in the state um, between the public housing that you see, like North Berry Manor, um, and the kind of work that I do, which is we call ourselves community development corporations. And they're typically, our model is to be kind of on a smaller scale. You know, we're not going to build a 10-story building um, and very much focused on integrating and working with the community. Um, so um, clearly there's you know, still a very significant need and for all intensive purposes um, there is uh, essentially a 0% vacancy rate in most of central Vermont. If you try to you know, call and get an apartment you have to be lucky and you need to get on a waiting list. Um, and I'll just mention the, the most recent uh, point in time count which is a count of homelessness in central Vermont came out yesterday and our numbers are rising again. Um, we had over 100 people on, on the day um, that they, so point in time is literally one day they attempt to count the number of homeless people in our community. Um, and I think that is partly rising due to um, a variety of things, but certainly substance use disorder. Um, and I did just want to mention, and I would be happy to come talk to you about this another time, but. Um, Downstreet is taking the lead in the state to help uh, address the, what is a huge shortage of housing for people who have successfully gotten into treatment 
Um, the story I tell is people get into treatment, make this really big decision to, to address their substance use disorder, come out the other side, and have no place to live. So we are focused on standing up a recovery residence across the state and helping to facilitate that with, through my colleagues. There's a bunch of us around the state who do the same kind of work. Um, and it's um, incredibly important work. I serve on the Governor's Opioid Coordination Council and the experience of hearing the stories and understanding, you know, what Vermont is doing well and what we have not done as well with. We've done an incredible job um, with getting people into treatment, but we're recognizing that there is a real need um, to help people recover. And recovery is all about the same thing I started to talk about at the beginning, housing and community. Um, so we feel like that work sort of fits well um, with us and we have a goal of developing at least 12 new ones in the next uh, 20 months but we know there's an immediate need for close to 34 recovery residents around the state so I don't know if you all have had a chance to talk or you know under uh, see the impact of substance use disorder um, in your communities I know your police department is pretty phenomenal in dealing with homelessness and mm -hmm. you know very engaged in that so I'm sure that they're you know aware of it I just wanted you to know that we're also um, working on that as well um, and if you notice when you have a chance to look at this we, we highlighted child care in our strategic plan which is essentially what this is um, just from getting feedback from all of our communities we heard over and over again um, that child care is a huge challenge and of course we're not going to run a child care but one of the big challenges with childcare is the physical space, getting the space right, you know, having the outlets where it needs to be, meeting all the requirements. So that's what we can bring to the conversation is sort of the infrastructure. Um, and when we've spoken to childcare groups, they, they have said that it's really hard to adapt existing spaces. So when we have an opportunity to build new, which we don't have all that often um, in central Vermont, um, we really need to be thinking about childcare. So, so our hope is to be able to do that. So I'm going to just stop, and if you have any questions uh, at this point, um, I'm happy to answer them. It's very impressive how much has gone into your planning. It's mm -hmm. a journey. I mean, it takes us a long time to do these and projects. Um, I've been doing this for 11 years now, and I'm still sometimes surprised at um, how much work it is to do each one of these projects. But, you know, it is a huge investment of community assets, otherwise known as your tax dollars, at mm -hmm. some point, and we want to do it right. And we're very respectful and mindful of that. We Downstreet currently stewards about $80 million worth of community assets through our portfolio of buildings, through those 500 apartments, and we take that, that responsibility very seriously. And through what you're doing, you're also promoting the independence of right. the individuals as well. Right. And that, you know, it's having been in this kind of work for a very long time, um, I know that, you know, some people can kind of think, well, people, if they're not working, they're not doing what they need to do, they're not trying. And, and you know, my experience of this work is after, you know, working with so many individuals, people have incredible challenges. Um, and it's not just financial, you know, their, their generational poverty has a lot of different aspects to it. And, you know, missing an opportunity for education, social connectedness, so many things need to health issues, mental health issues, mm -hmm. so many things come into play. And, and when you see someone have a challenge in one area, for example, their car breaks down, um, the next thing you know, they're losing their job because they can't get to work. And, you know, I often say to people, um, you know, many of us are fortunate enough if our car breaks down, we can write a check. And if we can't write a check, we have a friend who can help us or a family member. And often that's not the case for a lot of people. And unfortunately, more and more people are struggling as uh, more and more people's, you know, in the divide between income gets greater. And I think 11 years into doing this work, um, having been successful in developing many new uh, affordable housing in this state. We've almost doubled since in that 11 years, and the need is just as great, so. Eileen, do you have a time frame? I mean, as you know, we're in the middle of this project with yeah, the, with the, <laughs> the new town, town center yeah. designation, and we have a lot of work mm -hmm. and, and meeting with a lot of people to, to do. So do you have a time frame in your plans? So in our plans, uh, we are currently talking with child cares. We are talking with them all. 
we have not, you know, have we do not have an agreement with them all yet, but we are we think very close to, to that, so agreeing on a, a purchase price. Um, and then, you know, our hope is primarily because of some of the funding that's currently available that we will be applying for funding as early as this summer. Now, it takes over a year to, that's just mm -hmm. step one in the many different funding sources that we'll be looking at, but that will be sort of a first um, request for funding. Um, our timeline is that we would like to have all the funding in place by uh, late spring of 2020, um, and then a lot of other things need to happen, and construction would not start till probably early 2021. As far as the new town center, um, what, and we know that your timeline may not necessarily work with what I just said, um, we are not, so basically it's a decision around Act 250. If you had the new town center designation, we would not have yeah, to do that's Act 250. Kind of where I was going with that. We are kind of making the assumption right now that, in, in, as far as budgeting, that we will have to do Act 250. Um, so, you know, it's it's not a, a showstopper for us. I mean, it would be nice if we got done right. and we didn't have to go through that process, um, but it's not a showstopper mm -hmm. for us. So. And the other thing that you know I'm going to ask, as I've asked you and I've asked Allison twice, you do pay taxes. <laughs> yes, so we do not pay taxes at the level of uh, the appraised value. There is a uh, state law that essentially um, calculates it based on income. So, so what so essentially how these projects work is so the idea is to bring a variety of different funding sources in, the primary one being the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, which is a federal program that funds about 70% of the capital in the building. And our goal is to have as little debt as possible in these buildings um, so that we can then reduce the, the rent and keep the rent and we commit forever in perpetuity to keep the rent you know below market and affordable to people at low income levels um so like in we public housing that, right that you know how that yeah. works yeah. yeah so in public housing the you know the model is essentially housing and urban development the federal government provides subsidy every year our i say our model is much more entrepreneurial so we have to think ahead very long term right so so one of the things we do is we build really nice buildings up front right because we know that over time um, expenses are going to do this you know and the uh, in, you know the rents are not going to go up at that same level right mm -hmm. so so we are we plan far ahead we think like 30 years into the future you know we'll set aside money for reserves so that we can continue to operate it um, so given all of that um, it's not like public housing where there's a pilot program there's actually a different state law that calculates it based on income sensitivity um, and so as an example I can just off the top of my head the building in Barrie that we have um, I'm pretty sure when don't quote me on this but we pay about I think 45,000 in taxes um, and that building you know total costs of the entire project, you know, not just construction, but all the other things that went into it was probably $7 million. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, no one could operate. <laughs> it would be really hard to pay taxes on a $7 million building. So yes, we pay taxes, but you know, there's never well, you, a straight answer. I thought I would answer. just get that right Yeah, out yeah, no, no, it's good. No, it's good. It's, imp questions. it's important. And I sort of yeah. thought to say that I to many and I've also talked with our assessor regarding how it's worked, right. so. Right, and you know, the assessors in many communities have experience with that Absolutely. and can help with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you provided us a very thorough presentation. It's helpful. Okay, very much so. Any other questions? All right, I'm just curious if down the road you'll how to help the town get through to the town center project, if they'd be willing to participate at all in that. In helping with that process, I mean, I think you. you We've discussed spoke that, a little yeah. Bit. yeah. We've discussed that, and uh -huh. um, once we know what we really need, that's the, that's the key. There's the key right there. Okay. Right. Once um, you, I mean, once you, we're always open to that conversation, and we certainly do do stuff like that. You know, I mean, that's part of the the skill set and expertise we have is just understanding these complicated processes. We have not done that particular one, but, you know, we certainly well, work with all the same players. My, my first town center. Yeah. 
in after 30 years of doing this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is actually great. I mean, it's yeah. a huge. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. It is very exciting. Yeah. It's exciting, but to have someone yeah. with Dana's experience it makes a big difference. And huge. and honestly, it's uh, it it's in many ways important to us because one of the things that we probably will ask at some point is we will probably want to pursue funding through the. Um, Department of Housing and Community Affairs, the State Department, that funds community development block grant funds. You probably have used them yeah. for different things, mm -hmm. right? So you know how complicated those are, um, which is great that you're familiar with it. So we will want to make an application to them and we'll, we'll be asking for the support of you all to support that application and administer right. that application at some point. So That's I don't where know. the treasurer comes in. Right, yep. they, they know how to manage that stuff. Great. All right. All right. So, so I do have just one question about a child care going into. This is m mostly for people, elderly, elderly people. The housing? And, yeah. No, no, no. No. Oh, it's it, not. No, no. It will okay. not be dedicated to seniors. It will probably be mostly family housing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's actually this kind of really I great little mistaken. image I have in my head of the people upstairs might be able to access the child care or potentially even uh, work at the child care. The seniors can come across the street. There's a senior volunteer program where they can come across and, you know, read books and interact with the kids. Um, there, there's plenty of land there. Berlin Elementary is not mm -hmm. far. You know, when, when all the issues you were just talking about with the merger get resolved, we'd love to... Um, figure out a way to have a path through there, which I think requires constructing a bridge because there's it's pretty wet in there in some places. But it would be wonderful to have the ability to connect it over to the fields and the in the school there. So I think there's a lot of potential. For that. And I think a vibrant community like ours too, like the 60 openings would fill up really quickly, because like yes. you said, all of the businesses are tied together. Right. No, the 60 is a lot, and at the same time, I think it will fill up real quickly. I mean, Morrisville just opened a child care through Capstone Community Action to open it a year ago, and I believe it's 45 spots, and mm -hmm. they didn't have any problem I filling know. it up. It's yeah. just, there's such a need. Mm -hmm. There's a huge child. need. I'm sure you all, all know this. I know that just within my own staff, mm -hmm. there's four or five people who have really struggled. So, does that help? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All you. right. Thank you. Yes. Nice to meet you all. Nice and meeting you. Look forward to seeing you again at some point. Where did I get that idea? I got busy. Um, presentation information from the state of Vermont on the construction. Exit 6. Hello again. <laughs> nice to see you. Natalie. So good evening. Thanks for having us again. We appreciate the opportunity to come um, answer some questions. My name is Natalie Boyle. I'm the public outreach. And I'm um, Mike Booth, the resident engineer on the project. Bruce Martin, project manager from VTrans. So I handle all the information, um, liaison between VTrans or the contractor or Mike if you have questions or concerns. If you're on my update lists, you've been getting information from me. If you're not, um, I'll leave some cards here and I have some fact sheets I'll leave with Dana that have my contact information on them and feel free to reach out to me and I can um, keep you connected and get information to you. So with that, so that you understand who I am and what I do, I'm going to turn it over to Bruce and Mike and hopefully we can answer all of your questions about the project and about the upcoming closure in June. Sure. Um, so again, my name is Bruce Martin, project manager for uh, Roadway Design in VTrans. Um, we're here to talk about the Exit 6 closure uh, again. This is something that we've actually been in front of you um, back in January on. Um, just That was more of an informational thing, and now it's time to actually construct the project. Uh, we do have a closure period that's going to be starting in, on June 18th. It's supposed to be from June 18th to July 30th. Um, and we're really here just to make everybody aware that you know, this project is it's it's come around the schedule has been made we have bur construction on to uh to do the work um, again this is uh <coughs> we'll be closing this for six weeks sending traffic down to exit seven um, and i think they're going to be allowed to use airport road throughout the uh, duration of the, uh, the project i think we'll discuss some some legal load limits might be lifted at, at that time but i don't know if that went through um, but we are planning on sending a detour that will send them down 62 through, through various city, <coughs> excuse me, back up to, to uh, 63. 
Um, we, again, looked at many alternatives before coming up with this plan, um, putting in fencing, uh, scaling, but this is the most cost effective analysis and the safer analysis because we can blast the rock way back at a safe slope and then we can walk away and never have to come back here again. Um, if we do scaling or rock dialing, it's basically just putting on a, ba a band aid on a problem. It only lasts up to you know, 15 to 20 years and we can have potential to come back here again. And with the cost that we looked at, it just made sense to to go with the blasting route. and. Um, because there's not a lot of room on the exit six, we decided it was the best to, to close it down. Um, so obviously that's going to mean more traffic coming through Berlin on exit seven and uh, throughout this, the, uh, the local roads. Um, but again, this is the safest alternative that we found and we, we thought it was the route to go. So we're back in front of you, kind of this is a, a pre-closure meeting for everybody, just to let everyone know that you know, time has come. We're we're a month away. Uh, we have a contractor on board. They, if everybody's driven by there, you can see that they started doing some clearing. You can see just how much rock we are dealing with. Uh, there's quite a bit of material that we're taking out. I think it's 43,800 40, yards. 43,000 cubic yards. So there's a lot of material that's coming, and um, we're looking to get PUR uh, started <coughs> to blast in, in and out of there quickly, and then open that, the uh, exit six back up again. We have a couple of new board members. Uh, you want to go over the length of closure and everything? Sure. Um, closure we have set is uh, six weeks. So June 18th to July 30th is, is the plan closure. I can show you some plans of what we are talking about for magnitude. <coughs> um, so this is a typical section of, of the wedge itself. This dashed line is what is existing, and this solid dark line is what is proposed. So you can see there's quite a bit of material here, and this is actually 1,400 feet of this, you know, this material, 600 feet of it is within the ramp itself. Uh, so the proposal is to start in the ramp at the north end and work south uh, to a designated native point where it is safe for vehicles to, to um, use the ramp without um, fear of, of uh, material coming into the travel lane as well. So just with this magnitude of material, the equipment that it takes to, to move this material around, get it on trucks and, and truck it off, it just, it just and it, it just made sense to close the exit down itself and, and ship it off. Um, we will be utilizing rolling roadblocks um, with all the blasts. So that will be um, uniform traffic officers or UTOs will be setting up um, down the interstate. Uh, I believe it's around seven miles. Seven and a half miles, seven but we're going to move it back farther south just for preventative, yeah. in case something happens, we can get everybody off exit five and we're just trapped on the interstate. I mean, we don't think anything's gonna happen, but we just wanna go that extra route to make sure we have that insurance. And this is to give the contractor approximately 15 minutes to get everything set, set up the blast, and then they can check the roadway on 63, the interstate, both northbound and southbound, make sure there's no material in the roadway so it's safe for vehicles mm -hmm. to, to travel through the UTOs to pull over again. But the tra traveling public uh, continue on the way. And our plan is to do it after rush hour, so we're going to start 9.30, Chris, is what we were planning on. That way, most of the morning traffic's out of the way, and we're not holding up everybody trying to go to work. <laughs> we, we are allowing work uh, seven days seven days a week, so basically when they, they get the go-ahead from June 18th, they can be nonstop for 42 consecutive days, 43 consecutive days and until the work is, is complete to, uh, to get it done as fast as they can. And that is the uh, scope. Um, do you guys have any questions you'd like to discuss? And you're still taking the rock to Brussels? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yep. And some of it's going to our district, 300 yeah, yards or something, yards, yeah. roughly. But well, most of it's going to Brussels, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they won't be on other, other routes, it'll just be quick turn. Yeah, it's, it's right mm -hmm. there. So. Well, that's great us, taking so. advantage of them yeah. being so close. Yeah. Heavy truck. Mm -hmm. Bruce, is there a plan for emergency services? You've all been in contact with emergency services. Yeah, we uh, actually had a meeting not yesterday, the day before with uh, the sheriff, the district, uh, the VSP has been notified and we have a plan. That's why we're starting to roll on the roadblock back farther. Mm -hmm. Just in the event that something does happen, we have to close it down for a period so they can either fix the road or remove a large boulder. Um, and uh, 
and we have an alternative route for ambulances and fire trucks, and so everybody can get through. So. Mm -hmm. I think you have direct communication through everybody in case yeah. that something was happening right before road or right. was stopped. They can call it off. The sheriffs they have the radios in their cars, and they have direct contact with us. So if something needs to happen at that moment, we can not blast and so still get people through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Like I said, I mean, this is all in the interest of safety, so that's, you know, it is an inconvenience, we know, but um, we do believe that this is the safest alternative, that's why we went this route. Mm -hmm. Could you describe the detour signage for us? Yeah, they will have, uh, kind of show the routes. Um, so we'll have, basically, everything will be showing the detour routes, you know, 2x7, down around on 62 into Barry City on 302. Um, they'll have it marked the entire, entire way around and get back on Route 14 on 63. So they will have alternative routes throughout. We are proposing, I believe, we're going to put a, a portable message board on the interstate um, prior to exit 5. Yeah, so people have the option. So just, just so people know that exit 6 is closed and vehicular traffic, um, we're not going to send trucks there because this is right, a secret. Right. Yeah. But just in case anybody wants to go down exit 5 to go that route. Okay, so that would be not that a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we are going to mark that, but just so they are aware well ahead before they get to exit 5, that exit 6 is closed so they can right. use that, okay. that route. Yeah. So we're hoping that that will. Uh, deter some of the traffic so it doesn't use exit 7 and some of it will be using exit 5. So it doesn't seem it's a good idea not to divert unnecessary traffic to roll the road blocks if you can help it. Right. right. How late is it? You said about the start until like 9, 9 after uh, Construction start. will be started. They'll be prepping to for the blast in the morning, but we won't start the rolling roadblocks till I think we decided 9.30, 9.30, 10 o'clock. And then how long through the day did those go? It's just that one, just I that believe. One. Maybe yeah. two, but it won't be in the afternoon rush hour. When you talk about rolling roadblocks, you're talking about shutting down traffic completely. We're slowing down, so we, we get two cruisers in each lane of the interstate, and they drive at a slower pace right. to give us that window. We put flaggers on the ramp so nobody can get in to the blasting area while we're blasting. And, and it just holds traffic back long enough so it can shoot, move the rock out of the road, and let people through. So what happens on the weekends in July 4th holiday? So for July 4th holiday, we are actually going to have the exit 6 um, open again. Okay. So it's supposed to be open the day before, the day of, and the day after the holiday. Okay. Um, weekends, it will be closed down because we want we want them to utilize every day possible to get right. the blast down. Um, they will be able to work until 7 o'clock at night, but the blast will be contained for earlier. Oh, earlier. Um, apologies to the contractor, but there, are there penalties to exceed the time yeah. frame? We are, we are in the center of business center period for about six weeks. Yes. Okay. And what, what, uh, what has us believe in that it's, it will take the full six weeks? Are there any, anything that's being done to minimize that? or? Well, that's why we're giving them seven days a week to hopefully um, expedite the work. Um, this is being incentivized, so hopefully if they get it done faster, it, it's, it's they a good get a bonus. If yeah. not, they get fine. So it's in the best interest of the contractor to get it done yeah. Yeah. within the time frame. Yeah. Any more questions for them about safety or anything? Um, like Natalie said, she is sending out um, <coughs> notices. <coughs> so if anybody's not on her email, she's going to be giving updates throughout the project. Do you want me to leave them um, here? I'll actually leave them on the But line. like I said, June, June 18th yeah, is when our incentive uh, period starts, or when the closing period starts. So that's when we can expect the uh, inspector work to really be, be moving. Okay. Any other questions for the v The additional 18 wheelers going through Barry Town, Barry City. That area, is that going to be an issue? The, we aren't expecting any to go there because um, yeah. the Bruso pit is yeah. right there. Most of the materials go. I meant like eight, the 18 minutes going down exit 7 instead of exit 6. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, <coughs> as far as traffic congestion, uh, we've talked to Barry City and we're going to be reviewing um, any any congestion that, that may be happening. Um, and we can, our you know, B-Trans staff can help work with them on mm -hmm. timing. Because um, there's longer queues, and they've been working on it to allow the traffic to go right. through the process. What is the approximate car count? 
that, that comes off that exit a day, do you know? I do. Used to know. Um, that was a while ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. I had it all for the informational meetings. Um, it's a few thousand, I believe, per day. I can't think of it off the top of my head. That is something I can provide. Actually, I might. It's, it's fine. I mean, it, it guesses. It doesn't change anything, right? It's just the curiosity is, you know, downtown Barry is a right. is a, a bit of a nightmare during the, during the day, so it's. Um, and again, that's something that we can uh, we can evaluate their uh, their signals if need be. Um, just try to low limit the queuing. And I don't think I have those. How, how does that work downtown Barry? How, how when you? Because I, I guess I don't quite understand when you talk about. Queuing up, what, what would you do different to get traffic through downtown Barry? It's um, the timing, like some you're going to have like some side streets that you're not going to get as many vehicles coming onto Main Street, while Main Street is going to be getting the, the flow of traffic. So you can increase the length of the green for the um, the signals on Main Street to allow more vehicles to get through, I see. while holding more vehicles on the side street. And that's something you're working with. You would be working with them as. As it progresses, as needed. Yeah, sure. it's something that we can't predict now. We have to really see it in place until we can can um, put, you know do any changes for that. Yeah. Are you uh, going to use the airport road and Miller Road as the detour? We aren't going to. Um, sign it. We aren't going to sign it. Um, I do believe that local traffic will find the path of least resistance. I'm sure many of the locals know that airport road is is an option. And they will be cutting over from airport. And that would cut a lot of them out of Barry City. Yeah, I, I do anticipate a lot of them then using that. because the airport road in that part is all truck traffic anyway. Yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. truck traffic. Yeah, and I think Natalie has been in contact with some of the trucking companies possibly, just to make them aware that um, you know of the change. Um, numbers show approximately fourteen hundred and twenty-five use that exit peaking around 3 p.m. What's the traffic count on the weekends? <coughs> uh, let's see. Good question. I don't know if I have it broken down for weekend and weekday. I think this is uh, just under weekday numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do have truck numbers, which it shows like single trailer trucks that are approximately 79, which is you know, two percent of the total total traffic they use that exit. So an additional 79 per day will be going down through Barry City. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for V Trans? Thank you, folks, very much. Right. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you all. Time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Did you see that? Uh, this is real. Yes. But did you see that? No. Okay. 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 Driveway permit for Mr. Pel uh, Tremblay? Yes, we have a application for a permit to fix an existing driveway at 304 <laughs> Bartlett Road. Um, the culvert has heaved up and they'd like to have it lowered back down and have the driveway widened. Uh, it's currently 10 feet 3 inches and they would like to extend it to approximately 16 feet. I have had a conversation with the highway superintendent about it and you didn't raise any objections. And I don't know if the Tremblies are here. There she is. Hello. Did you want anything they wanted to add? Why don't you come on up? I don't know if you have any questions. So. The application. I, mean, I think I it's think fairly it straightforward. With, yeah. Uh, I think it can do it from the driveway side. Yes. It would interfere with traffic or anything. So we did not see any issue with that. I thought it was very thorough. Oh, thank you. Well, I had good coaching. <laughs> <laughs> and Dana and Tom. <laughs> Motion. I make a motion that we accept the driveway permit as presented. And again, it was very thorough in the fact that Tim does not have any issues. We approve it. Second the motion. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank there you. you. Right. I'll have Tom get this to you. Perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for coming. Have a good evening. You too. I remember. I remember how well you uh, pointed that out the other time. Well played. I, I heard well played. Tim, roadside mowing, garage heating. Come on up. Kind of cold in there the other morning. <laughs> no heat. We had put out the uh, roadside mowing bids. They were due today. We received two. I usually give you a cheat sheet, but I didn't have names on these, so I didn't cheat. So if you, if you need me to help you remember what the bids are, I can do that. roadside mowing bid was received on May 16th at 11.50 a.m. from Lampson Property Services here in Berlin on Walker Road. The price for mowing roadsides will be $5,500. This is the one pass both sides and a second pass on the agreed roads. Hourly rate is $65 per hour for any extra mowing that they may want. So that was one pass Although there are some that we require mm -hmm. two passes, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It says one pass both sides and a second pass on the agreed road. Now, does he say if it's an over the rail mower? Does not indicate any indication of what equipment would have an he over the rail utilize. mower. Mm -hmm. So, I talked with Sean and he was looking into renting one, but I don't know what happened. He wasn't going to buy one. It's got to be an over-the-rail mower because we've done it with out and over-the-rail mower and it, it's terrible. I mean, it's a waste of money as far as I'm concerned. So this bid is uh, Don L. Dexter. Uh, was received today submitting this letter as a bid proposal for your roadside mowing for the 2019 mowing season. The bid price uh, for one pass mowing of all your class two and three roadsides is $5,000 with any additional mowing needed done at the rate of $75 per hour. Bid request is for a six foot mowing pass. I assume that this is an uncorrected error from last year's proposal. The over the rail mower I have cuts at a five foot path, which I believe is the widest available. Yeah, it is. Hopefully this will suit your needs. Where is he at? Williamstown. Williamstown. We use, well, we've used both of these families <clears throat> before. Yeah. Donnell did it last year. Happy with Very. Well, I had a lot of people say it's the best they've ever seen done. So, I mean. How many hours would you suspect that it would take for the second uh, if there were another pass it's required? Like, it, it, what I want is a lot of the blacktop up here on the hill like the airport road and stuff. But paint turned like a lot of them are lawns, so there's no mowing anyways. Yeah. And Fisher Road and Granger Road is, you know, there's it's mainly around the airport, Scott Hill area, um, Crosstown Road, uh, Coxbrook. Anywhere that it's a problem. And last year he did most of our intersections with two passes. You know, to get yeah, so you could, picture. yeah, and he didn't. That was he didn't charge us for that. The only thing that he charged me extra was for the airport, Scott Hill, and where I went around with him and showed him where I wanted to pass this stuff. So it was you not. I think it was like I want to say like five hours. Do you remember what the total was for his mowing? 
Um, no, but Dana probably could find out. I could find out. I don't. Well, I don't remember. But I, 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 think it was similar to this. I think it was like this. I think it was like fifty-two. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. It was I certainly very, didn't get it. It wasn't. It wasn't a whole lot. I mean, so, Obridge bid. Yeah. So he went five hours over the. So you estimate five hours for the second, yeah, yeah. for the second cutting. So it's seventy-five an hour, about yeah, fifteen fifty or year. fifteen hundred, something like that. You can get the, you'll know, you can find out how much he charged last year. Right? Sure, yeah. I think it, I think the mowing itself was the same. I don't know what he charged per hour. Yeah, I was last talking year. about the extra. Yeah, I, I don't. I, hours or whatever. Oh, is it, his mowing is the bid is the same as what it was last year. If you would like, I can go look now. But you say he's uh, uh, Sean hasn't got a uh, over the. Well, he. I talked to him the other day, and he was going to rent one for a week. To me. Yeah. You won't find him. He's got, I, he's, he's got, got one. one with Tenko. Huh? He's got one ready, available. At Tenko. Huh? Okay. The third week of July. I think he found one to buy. He's had two different ones. Oh, maybe. I don't know. He, I know he looked. He was looking at one last year to buy, and it was only a three foot one. Yeah. And, I mean. Can't do three feet. You gotta do no, because then you're not, not going to get a good job because you're going to have that, you're going to miss in the height. middle. Yeah. Don L was in Williamstown and he's the um, highway superintendent for the city of Barrie. The um, so you said about five hours of this. Yeah, I, I don't know. We have to. I don't remember. To be honest with you, it wasn't a whole lot. I know that because there's not a whole lot to do. But the airport road in Scott Hill and and uh, out here needs two passes because the grass gets up and you can't see and. Well, I'm just looking at looking at this. If if that's the case, um, it'll come in still under Lamson's bid by twenty five bucks. Well, Sean's going to have to do it too, so he's got to add to his. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was curious at the difference in rates. What the how many hours they really were. Right. Then, yeah. It would be a matter of fifty. For seventy-five compared to about fifty-nine. I think Dana's gonna have the actual hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, how, what does the board typically do on it like for throwing residents to try to is there a preference to having someone who's a taxpayer in the town mm -hmm. higher than at all? Or? 5250 was the amount. A little bit. 5250. Unless it's really, really close. It's a resident That's what I think. And he's yeah. the same price, right? I would assume that. The mowing was 20000 right? Uh, yeah. yeah, well, this budget also includes some trees, but. Um, yeah. What was it? Yes. 5250 5, That's what it all came up to. That's what it, the that total. Was, yeah. All the hours mm -hmm. billed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You were very close. You said 5200 Yeah, I thought Great it was memory. Could you be a little more Accurate. precise next time? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know it wasn't a whole lot. Because, it. I mean, it's clear sailing. I mean. Yeah. What, what needs two passes is open. Yeah. You know, like over on the end of Scott Hill. Grows up there, you can't see cars coming. It's just, you know, it just needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I took him around, showed him all the roads, and he didn't miss a one. How did Lampson do when he did it? Huh? How did Sean do when he did it? Um, uh, all right, but he had a little dinky mower, so yeah, it was, a mower, right? yeah, it didn't mow very good. Okay, <laughs> it was it wasn't over the rail. That's you got to have it over the rail yep. because if you don't, you're not gonna 
you're not going to get a good cut. Because the problem you got is that you get it to close to the ditches and you're going to be in the ditches. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your motion? I make a motion that we accept the Donnell Dexter as the low bid um, unless there's further discussion or concerns. Any second? A second. Any further discussion? No. <laughs> no. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next on the list here is your heating system. You remember last time when I spoke to you about the heating system, I couldn't find one of the quotes. And so I called Gillespie and got a copy, and then, of course, I promptly found the original one. So there, there we go. I wasn't very surprised either. Um, we have two quotes um, for the same equipment. This is a propane-fired 250 thousand BTU Modine unit heater. Um, the quote from Gillespie, 4,490 for one um, heater. That, oh, okay, that's per heater, 4,490. The other quote he gave was an oil-fired um, heater, 185,000. Um, we were leaning toward the propane uh, more. That's 71.43 for that one. And then the price we received from Robert Felch um, for two units if needed. Um, his was 51.33. Well, we, we have to have that was That was something else. This was, I think if you look over here, it's to install two new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both of them right. being new. And I did notice that it was two and slightly larger, 300,000 right. as opposed to the 300,000, yes, yes, right. And since we first started this this discussion, the other furnace, furnace has, has uh, do up the ghost. It must have heard the other one was broken, so it thought it would keep it up. Yeah. Sees what Mother Nature is mm -hmm. up to. It's a fairly significant difference for you. Um, yeah. And is the quote from all of them all hanging furnaces? Yes, they have. And that's to be. what you need, yeah. right? I just they, wasn't sure if all use, of them were hanging. They can use the existing pipes for the uh, exhaust. They're just going to hang them right in the same place their oil furnaces are hanging. Yeah. The only thing that's different is that they got to repipe the fuel into them. And then does Felches include the electric too? They included the gas line. Um, I don't believe his electric costs are, the electrician costs are in It doesn't there. appear yeah. so. I thought it wrote, I thought it said on near install. Does it? It did say it install too. It does say install. It doesn't so. exclude anything, so. No. So it sounds like, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's included in it. Mm -hmm. Pretty mm -hmm. sure he said it was everything running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what Bobby told me. The Gillespie mm -hmm. did not include the electrician. Right. No, because they don't have electrician. Right. Right. We know both vendors, both reputable, mm -hmm. and I mean we've used both vendors. Mm -hmm. Bobby doesn't provide the propane, so what he's doing will probably end up doing the propane anyway. So, mm -hmm. and our main goal is is not only because um, it's cleaner and better than oil is our underground oil tank is getting old and they would like to put the propane tank by the generator out here near the fence so that if you ever decide to switch this building over to propane you can just run a line from that tank right over if there's no further discussion i make a motion that we accept robert felch's quote um, for two new ATV hanging gas furnaces. It's the lowest bid based on two, and it's a bigger system. I second that motion. Um, I'm going to do the digging. 
we've got to cut our black top over there and put a ditch for the, for the line. But Bobby suggested to make sure that we it's plastic. The line is plastic. What, well, sleep it or? No, the line is plastic. And he said put it in conduit under the driveway. Just to be on the safe side. And just come up the side of the building with a 90 degree. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, the line is an inch and a half, I think he said, or an inch and a quarter line that feeds them. So um, if I went with two inch conduit, I can just shove the line right through it. Yes, yeah, so there's a sleeve. Yeah. Now, if anything ever happened, we don't have to dig the yard up again and just pull it out. And that's it. So this one from uh, Bobby Felch says uh, quantity one, but it's for two heaters. For two. Two. Yeah. So it's one on the on the quote number. Yeah. And then if you look over here, install. It's two. on the right under description of work, Brad. There you go. Yeah. Took me a minute to catch that. I was trying to figure out why the significant price difference, but I mean. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. So I guess you can have Bobby start anytime he wants. Thanks for handling the digging, mm -hmm. too. And, sleep. and you'll make arrangements with Gillespie about the gas? Yeah, I'll call him tomorrow. Okay. I don't know that Molly got the bid, but we went to propane. All right. Mm -hmm. And That's now we move on to the truck. We, we're under contract with Gillespie, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, highway truck. Come on up. <coughs> yeah, the chair might be on. I'll, support. I'll, I'll stand over here. <laughs> support. Well, I'm uh, just support. Good evening. Good evening. How are we doing? Good. <coughs> I won't knock that precious sign over there. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Tim, I'm Dan St. Cyr from Clark's Truck Center. Uh, Tim had contacted us about... Um, after hearing all the horror stories of how far out new truck deliveries are, um, asked about when when do we need to start talking about one for this next year. Um, <clears throat> and currently uh, placing an order at this point in time, trucks are being built out in March and April of next year. The order boards are, are that filled. So we discussed a couple different options with them, and um, we have, as we have in the past, I think a couple of your trucks so far have been stock units that we have been building and and together with HP Fairfield Company here. And um, I think they, the, the town has purchased that. Um, the one that we're trading came from Tenko and that was that was the uh, same thing. They, they had it as a demo. Correct, at that time. Yeah. So we have one currently on order that is actually building in uh, middle to end of August at this point in time, Berlin Blue, imagine that. Mm -hmm. uh, we just picked some different colors throughout the year of what we can, what uh, people may buy. Um, not that we had an idea of this, it just happened to be a good time, I, I guess, at this point in the game. Um, so we had, Tim had talked about it and said, well, what, what are some different options that we have? So I had come down and, and had looked at uh, the truck that you, you folks were looking at trading and gave a, gave a trade value and, and uh, a bottom line price. Um, but then, <clears throat> I guess I probably should have brought some copies for everybody, Tim. In the past, we've had some differences in, in um, extended warranties five years, six years, I know you keep your truck seven, but we now have the option of having all seven years of full coverage of them now. Um, so one of the things I looked at is a truck up for trade, um, all warranty is um, expired at this yeah. point in time on that truck. Has been for um, a year. Correct, has been expired. So with the truck that we have being built to be ready to go uh, for winter time frame this year, um, one of the things that we talked about with Tim and I did bring extra copies of this for everyone. If it was something with option, you can take one and pass it around. I'm not sure how many. Um, it's, a, it's a company that we deal with called Kansas State Bank, and they specialize in municipal leases. Um, and what we had done, I'll wait for a copy of your line for everybody, just to show some options if it's something you folks are interested in. I know it's not specifically your year plan to purchase, but. Um, 
it, um, it gives you some different options of anything you might be interested in. So if you look at that formal proposal sheet, um, option number one, <coughs> Acquisition cost is the total cost of the chassis with a full seven years of warranty and the body included on top of it, <clears throat> including the plow that the team uh, would request to use, minus the trade-in value, giving you that principal balance of the 155647 So that is the same throughout all these options, but I just want to go through the options. Option one is maybe you have most of your money, but you won't have it all till next year's approval. Uh, for your capital planning. So this would show trading in this truck, having that principal balance left, um, you would have your first payment or your full payment would be due one year after you receive the truck, being that total of the one over on the right hand side of the 161,437. So we go one year with no payment. You go one year, no payment at all. You run the truck for one year, your one payment is due at the end of that one year. That's one way. And then the rest of them, I just kind of it, it put, had them put together a three-year, four-year, and five-year lease option for you folks with a dollar buyout at the end basically is what it is. And those payments on the right-hand side would uh, correlate with the three-year, four-year, and five-year if you decided to do a lease and do a certain amount each year. <clears throat> but the top one was the one that didn't know if it would be the best scenario for you folks. Um, and especially looking at, like I said, I looked at the truck that would be up for trade this year. The warranty has expired on it. And we know in today's world that uh, one repair can be Costly. very, very easily could match what that interest rate is on, on that amount of money just to, to uh, make that payment one year out from when after you receive the delivery of the truck. What would happen if the budget wasn't approved? We don't, we haven't obviously worked in this budget and it hasn't been approved by the voters yet. Is there an opt out? And if that would be the case, what would, and am I looking right at it? Well, I think is, there's something in the bottom of that um, lease proposal. Of course, the leasing stuff doesn't all get situated until right, I mean, you know, the truck's ready to deliver and the town goes through that process of that. I think there's some different, I don't know the rules and I'm not going to try to state them. Um, different there's rules. There's got to be a non-appropriation clause in there as a municipal lease. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that raises that different yeah. avenue versus. That's what I wanted you to tell Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that means if the, the budget doesn't pass? Right. Right. Exactly. If in the event because, the budget. Because you have to pass a budget every yeah. year, that has to be in there. But there would be a cost, I mean. Worst case scenario, the budget didn't pass. And obviously we can't give this truck back, but technically if we had to give the truck back, what would the cost be for using the truck for a year? That's a very good question, Dan. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, uh, other than looking at, I know what your interest is gonna be, obviously. You, know, you, that, you but, know what I'm asking. Then we're gonna yeah. have something yeah. to do too. Question, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a very, Mm -hmm. um, Very astute of you to ask. Him. I don't know, but, <laughs> exactly. Um, but anyway, um, you just scared all the other people to table now. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that I expect no, the budget's not going right to pass, but you know. <laughs> no, it, however, it, it's funny. We, you know, I, I I have a lot of questions with different select boards, and that is one that's never been asked, and it makes brings a very good point. We've had very good luck of uh, only spending what people give us permission to spend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you are you firm on the trade-in, or is there any fluctuation or well, still negotiation? That was based on knowing what the truck is right now. Mm -hmm. um, I took pictures was it a week or so ago, um, ran in the NADA value, saw what it is, and knowing that we would get that truck probably before another winter. If it went another winter, then we would probably have to reevaluate it at that point in time. Understandable. What year is that truck that we're trading? 13, 13 I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Was that 20, 2019? Or? 2020. 2020. The new one would be. And the new one is. The new one would be, yes. And also, International is still um, in conjunction with Consolidated Fleet Solutions that 
there's a thousand dollar rebate that comes back to the town after delivery of the truck as well. Just included this in here for you. What does the extended warranty running cost? You said that you can go longer than <clears throat> I have now we now have the availability to put seven full years of coverage on. And I did I did include in this, Dana, maybe I should have uh, emailed it all to you ahead of time yeah. first, but I've included the standard warranty in here, which basically is a year on the whole on the yes. chassis itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's other components and coverages that go a little longer. But I did put all the all the details in here of extended warranty coverage, everything that is covered in okay. the vehicle, everything that's covered in the engine and, and after treatment solution. I can read it. Exactly, yeah. and all that. Yeah. So I put that all in there. And in the past, I think the International's had some differences in time frames and mileage and so on and so forth. And, and it never was a, you might have five years all on this one truck. There might be five with some six year increments on other items of this one truck. But now we can do seven years on all of it, mm -hmm. which I said, if you, I called Tim and said, if, you, if you're keeping your truck for seven years, wouldn't you like to have seven years of coverage? And he said, yes, we would. If we haven't been able to in the past, but if we could, that would make sense to do that. So. That's what I included in this. Well, it's just like the last one we traded. We got the new 18, it, it, and the warranty was only for five years, and we kept it for seven. The last two years cost them a lot of money, a lot of money. What did you say was the the time frame from the time a truck is ordered till you get it? If we were to order a new, if I were to go home and order a new chassis tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The new truck probably won't be built until March-ish, maybe even in April of next year. Oh. Our boards have filled up considerably more than what we ever thought it would. And, and this is why, I mean, it, you know, I saw some faces chuckle when I said Berlin Blue. Uh, this is why we kind of went on a limb this year and ordered up quite a few tandem axle trucks uh, for town municipalities, and we're we're building them with the different town manufacturers. Um, we've done some construction dumps this year that we don't ever do. Uh, we've ordered five, and three of them sold before they even got in our yard. Um, it's just people people are looking. Times are good. People are looking for things, and they're hearing that the orders are out so far to get something. It just it was perfect timing to be able to have some of this. So, and you never know. I mean, if somebody. God forbid something happens and they roll a truck over tomorrow and it gets total, then, then you need a truck. The town can't go through the next winter without a truck. Exactly. So it's, it's nice to have something available for those occasional occurrences that things do happen. Mm -hmm. Tim, the truck you're trading <laughs> in isn't stuff. the one that we waited for, like it was six months down at Perry City. Is that the next one? That was Eddie's. Yeah. 2015. Mm -hmm. right. Is there a copy of the finance, the contract in there? Yes, there is. Okay. Correct. I just brought extra copies of that for you folks to all see that. But it is all in there in the last section, yes. So the cost of the truck is $205,647. With all the extended warranty in it, yes. With warranties and the equipment mounted on the truck? Yes, correct. So at $155,647, and what is in the... What is in the budget now for a truck? Or do we have any left? We have, um, this is our issue this year. We have the uh, equipment and structures account budgeted for $200,000. We have Richardson Road culvert that yeah. has to be finished this year. And that, we might overdraw that account even with the way we are. That could be yeah. almost 250000 now that's the worst case scenario. I mean, mm -hmm. but. you haven't heard anything about a grant on that yet. No. No. Don't call them. <laughs> Lay low. <laughs> no. no, I watched Norfield Selectman's meeting and Jeff called them three times to see if they were going to get a paving grant, and they said, "Don't call here again." Oh really? Yeah. Um, that's what he told They've been well. They were very generous to us last year. Oh, I know they. Were. And um, if we didn't get one. I don't think we really complain too much, but but that's what I'm thinking, Brad. That we're going to be into that for two hundred thousand anyway. By the time we're done, um, I think the I think we have put some money into it. I think we have with some of the preliminary work. I think we've got about fifteen thousand into it, something like that. 
I like that you included the seven year warranty now. I that's, think that's a great idea. That's yeah, great. Absolutely. Being a past service manager at Clark's for seven years, I I am I'm a I'm a very firm believer in extended warranties. Things change so much today compared to what they used to be. Mm -hmm. Well I mean just just the two of them, Timmy's and Eddie's up there over there is the extended warranties cut a lot. So are we talking that this truck, if the board went forward, when would the town receive the truck? This July or something? No, like the chassis is going to be built mid to late August. We'd see it, let's just say, end of September, the longest scenario. And you're going to have 60 to 90, 60 to 90 days after that. Percent. Okay, so then the payment would be due somewhere in the fall of 21. 21. Mm -hmm. 20. Right, oh, 20. End of yeah, 19. I'm, oh, this is 19, yes. 20. That's not rush Fall, fall 19. Uh, you'd have the truck at. And well, you're I'm gonna, sorry if, to keep asking. If you want with a one year deferred lease, if, if we got the truck delivered to us in September of our 20 budget. Right. We wouldn't have to make the payment until September of 21 budget. That's right. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although calendar year is 20. Yeah, sure. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's what, yeah. When do you have to have an answer on this? Before somebody else signs for it. You know, you think about having Diane look at it. Sure. I mean, I think, I think we need to. I think that would be wise. Mm -hmm. I think we need to look at this. Um, I might also suggest we might have other options. Um, yeah, it's just an option that I know. That yeah, I I, and we appreciate it. Yeah, you know. absolutely. And the, and the breakdown is is in this as well, right? I now, you're asking. Now, the one thing that we got to consider is is if we don't order a truck before the 27th of May, the state contract ends. Oh, and sorry. Uh, yeah, that was the only thing. Yeah. You're right. I'm so, sorry, I didn't catch on that. It's actually, it's May 21st. Is what oh, I saw today. Oh, okay. So the state of this, yeah. Well, I looked at it to see what it was. Bless you. Bless you. Um, so we currently hold the state of Vermont contract for the VTrans trucks, and the discount level is 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 a is a very decent aggressive level. Yeah. Um, which brings the way the price down um, for all municipalities within the state. Um, and when I I, um, I submit for a special pricing assistance to the international going, okay, this truck I'm proposing to the town of Berlin. The pricing customer is not the town of Berlin, and the pricing customer is the state of Vermont. That gives us the higher discount. They accepted it. They gave me the higher discount out of 46% based on January 2 of 18 price pages, and that's good through May 21st. At the end of May 21st, VTrans has accepted our proposal and they are trying to go up through the chain of command. Nothing with the state is ever fast. We don't know if we'll see anything <laughs> before, before the, <laughs> sorry, before, <laughs> we before specialize the, in slowness too. Yeah. So <laughs> what will happen, even if they accept it after the 21st, and this is the time of year that we don't like because there's always that guessing game. After the 21st, there will be an increase in prices of chassis and they will also, International will take the price page of January 2nd, 2018, and they'll probably move it up to January 2nd, 2019 price pages, which is an increase. And then they'll adjust the percentage, but it won't ever be what that is. Mm -hmm. It may be close, but I know it's not going to go down. So my question is, is that if we're going to wait until um, put it in the budget for next year, um, we have to order it, otherwise we're going to lose that yep. discount, and then it's going to be a long time before we get it. So, so just out of curiosity, what was what was your question? Is I don't know, I didn't understand that. Having Diane look into what, what did you mean by that? What other financing options are available for us through gotcha. local banks yeah. and whatnot? Diane's the treasurer. I think we need time to look at this, Absolutely. Um, and frankly, yeah. next Tuesday is not going to give us enough time. Unfortunately, it is. you know, I don't see what. 
Yeah, but I mean, th that's not taking the, the truck this year. This. Oh, I I understand. Yeah, it'll be the next budget year. So I mean, what it what it is is got to be ordered. I mean, usually we, with things like this, order, I send them over to if Rob we order to have a, a look truck at and it. Something happened. Mm -hmm. Do we have to take it if we have the order of truck? I'm trying to. Th I was just thinking. Um, what do you think you would need for time to get all of your information together? I would say by the next select board meeting, which is June sixth. Because I think, because you have been a very valuable customer to us, and we do tend to cater to municipalities, I don't even mind, you can handwrite something on there, yes, we accept this pending our next town select board meeting on such and such, and that way I could, I could hold this truck at this pricing for you, and if it doesn't pass, I'm a, we're okay with that. The whole way that to the next I'm in favor yeah. of that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that that might be. I just hate to see can... us lose the discount. Yeah. And and it is sizable. And option one is good, but like we said, Diane might be able to have some other options. If she has that extra time, that would be very helpful. The um, I like that proposal. One issue we have with in the budget this year, if we were to, to take it out of the 2020 budget, we do have money um, budgeted in that budget. And within the budget, the select board has the option of spending it within the operating budget. They can spend it from different lines if, if they want to. Um, we very rarely do that because it's gets confusing it's not right however um, I would hesitate and I, I I hate to be the naysayer but I would hesitate to to me that's an agreement that really isn't an agreement I mean they haven't they wouldn't vote on this until June 6th right so I don't, I don't see know even have the authority to, you know it's um, almost here you know two weeks from tonight yeah, yeah. Actually, I did, I did a lot of these, well, we did a lot of these this year. Um, people were nervous, again, knowing how far out trucks were. They, we, you know, we wrote up the verbiage and, and uh, just said, you know, pending your town meeting approval, and we held it under that right. as well. And so we, we can do it under a select board. If, if it's something you're interested in, yeah. we're happy to do that. My only input is I just think we need more time because I'm the one that has to explain this to the auditors. All right. I want to see. I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been a good customer, he said, so like, we'd like a discount extended. Honor that anyway. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I mean, it's what it's what the state of Vermont what, does. So, what is our little signature change? Mm -hmm. What what we would do at that point is we would change it from a stock order truck to a sold order truck. Can in international's opinion, because the special pricing assistance is good through. Okay, I actually brought a copy of it. Maybe not. Good through the 21st. No, I believe you said so, that. So, and if it changes to that, then we're good there. So say something something bad happens come your next meeting. So it'd be like if we ordered a truck for somebody and now, and this happened to us this last year, we, had, we ordered a truck for a contractor and before the truck came in, it had already gone to the body company. And he says, I'm selling my business, I don't need this truck anymore. Yeah. What, what do we have? stand on. We could fight and go against, but it was a specialty truck, something that was very different and we can't stop it now. Let's, you know, we get, we've committed to a body company that's going to put the body on anyway. So if it doesn't work out for you folks, something else happened, okay, we'll turn around and we'll go back into our stock inventory and we'll be in our, be in our yard and waiting for somebody else to buy it. You, but at a different price structure at that point in time. Could you email me what statement would be to hold the truck, what would be required? Sure. Okay. And so that I can send it through our lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah. You know. I've never had an attorney say no. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we come up with something for you. <laughs> well, well I mean, I work. just think that you know <clears throat> it's better. No, and that's that's totally fine. Better better than handwriting it on here right now. I get you there. 
Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I'd be happy to do that. Because really, I mean, to me, is it a binding agreement? It's the thing. Not really. If the board votes on June 6th not to pursue it. Right. Yeah, I would just imagine you could order it with the assumption that we're going to take it. Yeah. Well, this truck is our, this truck is currently on order. It is blue, right. though. It's the know, Berlin so, I mean, blue. Must, <laughs> must have already planned the we were by it, so we could... That's we ordered this truck much, well, I think it was September of last year anyway. Wow. So it, it's coming. It's just I know that it has a built date of August. Time. Okay. Yeah. And that would be June what? Yeah. Six. Six. I'm having surgery that day. I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I'm sorry, you'll have to cancel. No, I'm not. <laughs> I've been since January to get into June 6th. I hope your surgery goes better than mine did. <clears throat> Mine's nothing serious. I'm getting that sex change out. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry about that, dude. No. Josh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that for you tomorrow, Dan. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Certainly. I will. I will probably let you know, Dan, how that works out by you no know, later than Tuesday, the twenty-first. I, mean, I don't. Like that. I hate putting that sort of pressure on. That's not me. That's not how I like to do things. But I just, like I said, it's that time of year thing where that the end of the state V Trans contract is coming to an end, and they're they're allowing and in, in proposing to go forward another extra year with it, but they don't. They wait to the last minute to do it, mm -hmm. so. Can you do something about it? <laughs> I'll take it under advisement. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have thank you. a wonderful yeah. night. I know I didn't talk as well. <laughs> oh, you came for support, like you said. You. We'll let him talk the next time. Thanks there you for coming go. over. Have You're a good welcome. night, gentlemen. You as well. <clears throat> Okay, Dana, uh, Black Road Agreement, last four. We had um, uh, two more for Tim, right? and then oh, we, can, oh, we had, right. uh, would you like to speak about COAS? Coos Trail. Oh, um, we've had, we, we, as a town, hasn't had a, a great big problem down here other than garbage every year. Refrigerators and TVs and tires. And, and, um, you see the town dump down there, you know? No, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, landowners have, and they want to know if they can gate the road because nobody else owns any land in there but Henry Legue, Chip Legue, Morse Farm, and us. There's no other landowners that, on that road at all. And while well, they said road is it? it's a three, isn't three. It? I think that's problematic. All the way through? I don't think it is all the way through. No, it's not all the way through. Oh, no, no, Four. no. Just, just that little section. I think it goes to where the dump used to be. Yeah. Like that. yeah, but you want to take and get it up higher. Well, yeah. Henry set, set a gate. Chip doesn't think he really wants a gate. He'd rather block it and leave it open so if somebody wants to hike down in there or bicycle down in there, it's, you wouldn't believe the damage they've done down there in the last two weeks. Yes, and then... Berlin PD got called, had to go down there, and the guy just tore everything up, lost his four-wheel drive and his thing, didn't have a driver's license. It was that could penalty anyway. and suspended. <laughs> Don't have to worry about losing that. <laughs> um, oh, terrible. I mean, we got the house at the top of the hill. Nobody's living there. It's up for sale. And, you, and probably... Mr. Lugie will own it someday because what's uh, involved in getting Coos Trail uh, down changed to, to a class four? four. Um, I think you'd have to have a public hearing on it, and then it'd be a vote of the board. Well, it, when I was here before, we never plowed it. It was gated. Yeah. We never plowed down in there. I was shocked when we came back here and found out we had to plow down there. I don't know what that brought that all on, but well, I'm thinking that if we take and kick it down, if we can get down to a trail, then we don't have to worry about plowing it or doing anything else. We can, yeah. they can put their blocks where they want on top. 
Uh, What's the time frame on that, Dana? Um, I would say that it would take, by the time you advertise your public hearing and, and had that, a month, maybe. And again, there's probably some steps that I'm not thinking of that we'd have to review. Do we have like a, an official like a policy or anything when it comes to our roads on how we handle them or an ordinance? Like so. We do have a policy on class four. Well, roads. Th this way, yeah. if you're having a yeah. public meeting, but, we can. But class three goes kind of by the state law. Put yeah. black no, roads back into a trail. Upgrading or upgrading, though. Mm -hmm. No, no, we don't. It goes by the law, okay. state law. You wanted to pick on me, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so it's. I mean, if the board we had to put a new culvert in down there last year because uh, the beavers dammed it up and then the dam broke and Washed took the out. yeah and ruined the culvert. So we ended up had to put a new culvert in. So it's already got a new culvert in down there. And there's only one on the whole road, but I mean, I think it would just, be great not to have to maintain that road yeah. for that goes nowhere. Yeah. Um, well, see what it takes to yeah. do that, Nathan. And that'll be another thing for the six. Because mm -hmm. every spring, that goes green all the way through, though that, that road. Yes, but it's, went all the way but through. more. S where does it come out in Barrytown? Right there at the where you Bill turn to go down right? where Bill Wolf lives. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Morse has already gated his end of it, so evidently he's done something with Barrytown. Or he just gated it. Or yeah, or, or something. I don't know. <laughs> Probably no one. But they've done a lot of damage <laughs> down there. Yeah. A lot of damage. Well, and, and a lot of time and money spent for us down there cleaning up all the garbage because there's nobody around. They just drive down yeah. there and throw everything out. Well, okay, we're going to that, Dana. We'll I will. Do yeah. that on the six. And I'll have answer for you by then. Um, the other thing I got was I got a phone call from a guy in Barrytown. Eric is his first name. I can't remember what his last name was. And he wants to know if we can put guardrails on the gun club road, which is a class four, up at the top of the hill there where the ledge is, looking out over the Kubota dealer. And you come down the hill, you got that sharp corner yep. before you pitch down. I, I don't believe they can put guardrails in there because it's all ledge. They'll never be able to hammer them in. Yep. So they'd all have to be bored. And that's going to be costly. I suggested to him if you guys go along with it. I already have Jersey, Jersey barriers. Jersey barriers down there that we use to block the road off in the winter time, yep. so it can't be used. Um, all we got to do is move them up the hill. Move them up the hill and put two of them on. We got two of them down there on the bottom, and then we got one at the top. But I don't want to drag that one down from the top. But we could put two on the corner. I thought there was more than that on the bottom. Oh, there's blocks. There's only two Jersey barriers. Couldn't use the blocks too, or? Well, I don't think you're going to need to because the two Jersey barriers are going to is going to take care of the corner. Sure. So makes sense to me. Okay. Well, I wanted to get. He called me and wanted to know what I what I could find out, and I told him I'd talk to you guys tonight, and and. Um, Sorry, ladies. I said guys. It's all right. <laughs> and um, and see if it would be okay with you to do. Have you opened up the gun club? Nope. Yet? nope. Uh, not until Monday. Yeah. And Rowell Hill's not open either. I was in Rowell Hill a week or so ago, and it was the the water was just coming out of the road everywhere, and it was muddy. Yeah. So if you open it, they're going to totally destroy it. Yep. Yeah. It's only supposed to get graded once a year, so I'd rather hold off until it's dried up some. Hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. The excavator's over there right now, so I was going to um, do do it Monday because when I was in there, the bank slid and plugged up the ditch, so we had to clean some ditches down through to get the water going to the culverts. And Crosstown Road is back open. And I know you all got an email, and I got, I got some nasty phone calls from the same person. There's no way it was ready to be open before anyway. No, 
I mean, we changed the culvert over there by Gary Richardson's yesterday, and it, it took us all day because the ditch filled up with water, and then the, the culvert kept trying to float on us when we were compacting it. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's still a lot of water in the ground. Yeah. I mean, it's open, and I don't know how long it's going to hold up right there on that stretch below Gary's. And the thing I don't understand is, is the culvert that was in there was wicked deep. And I think the reason for it is is that we've had to put so much gravel over the years Probably. that we've built it up. So, And there was no clay. It was all gravel. So I don't know why it does that. I mean, well, it, the humps were five and six feet high. Well, a lot of water in there to freeze. Lift it. Um, it, was, it, was, it was bad right there by Gary Richardson's. Yep. And then... And I sent them over Monday and was going to see if we could open it Monday. And to me, was, they were hauling gravel over to him to cover up the stone that we had to put in there to get rid of the mud. And he said that the cracks opened up a good four inches or better when he drove over it. it just The road just went like this and opened right up. And you put 3,000 cars a day on there, I yeah. think. We opened it today about 2.30, quarter to 3, and I think by... 3.30, there was a thousand cars already gone over it. Well, the word got out quickly because well, when I, I went mean, to have dinner... Eddie and TJ went over there and, and took the sign were, down in Riverton, and before they got up to to where Chris, where Donnie Mercier used to live, mm -hmm. they had five cars behind them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just taking the sign down. Yeah. David Volpery said to me, he said, I think they put out a red alert that Cross down roads opened up again. <laughs> and today was Everybody the corporate cut in, cut in Montpelier too, so people may have been looking for a cut. Oh, really? Getting no. back from Montpelier, I'm thinking. I don't know, but so that's I guess that was it for me. But Thank unless you. you want to talk about, remember I asked you before the meeting about we got some major money to spend on that truck. I'll tell you that right now. The hoist is shot. It's is that all, what is it the hinge or the piston itself? Oh, the piston itself is so pitted. Yeah. It's all, I mean, he puts it down and there's oil everywhere. Could and someone look at it and give a list of what it would well, mean? I didn't, I didn't look at it. I know it's going to make be a done. list I and what a, the cost is. Well, I know what a hoist is because we just had to put one in Timmy's shop. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm just saying. That's it, it would help me. That's anyway. $3,300 yeah. right there. With installation or no, just the piston? No, that's uh, just a piston, $500 for labor to do it. Good. And we're fighting with the guy that was here, Fairfields, right now because um, the, the hoist was under warranty and in Timmy's truck, and we couldn't get it down. Jeff Newton helped me down at the city garage to get the hoist out of the truck. He came over with a backhoe with an extended boom and we got we got the hoist down on the ground and then cross town towing took it to Morrisville to Fairfields for us because they wouldn't come down here. Their their insurance won't let them work out of the shop. Hmm. So anyways they sent it back to Mayotte and they tore it all apart. They found a complete shop rag inside of of the cylinder. So what it did was, is it plugged up everything so that the oil couldn't come, the went up, but then the oil couldn't, couldn't come release. out, so it wouldn't come back down. And they want us to pay for it. And I said, I'm not paying for it. There ain't no way we put a shop rag in there, and that's a brand new hoist, because we were out here fixing the police department yard, and he put his body up out here, and he blew a seal in the first one. So that one was under warranty. They took it back, and they put a new one in and never said a bit word. But now they, they claim that we put the rag inside of it. Well, if, if the rag was in there, and it had to go into the hydraulic tank, had to go through all the lines, through Filters. the pump, filter, the valve. Now, how can it be a solid rag? When it gets there. <laughs> yes. So that was the, and, a miracle. And they sent us the bill, and Diane got a, 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 the bill the other day because I talked to Mike last Wednesday at the truck show, and I told him, I said, I got a bill, and I said, I'm not paying it, and I'm not paying the labor of installing it. Because if that's the case, you're going to pay me for having Newton take it out. 
And he said, no, don't pay it. Well, Diane got a nasty thing in the mail um, Monday, Tuesday. We sent they an want appropriate their money. response. Huh? We sent an appropriate yeah. response. Mm -hmm. I was going to say they made it. I talked, I talked to Mike about it outdoors tonight here, and I told him that Diane got a thing. He said, don't pay it. Mm -hmm. He said, because either Mayotte's going to eat the cost of it, or Fairfields is going to, because he said there was no way you guys could have done that damage to that hoist. So, but so I know what a hoist is going to cost us. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that the, of course, it wasn't loaded in the truck, but you almost think it would be enough oil pressure that it blow that hole, that, uh, that rag out of there. Is well, the we, unhooked it, we unhooked the hoses to get it out, yeah. and not a drop of oil came out of those hoses. And the city of Montpelier has got that, 313 or uh, yeah, 319 or whatever cat excavator. That's a big excavator on tires, rubber yeah. tires. He stood that thing right on its rear wheels, pushing down on it with the bucket, trying to push the cylinder down. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Hmm. Hmm. But they had pictures on it, and that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. So, but and then, then he's got to have new tires. And it's got to have a new cylinder on the front of the wing. That's a thousand dollars. And the cylinder on the back of the wing, it's just from being used. That's all. It's all pitted and it's worn out. Sand, uh, salt's getting to it. Well, uh, you don't do any salt, but it's just and the and the back of the body is all cracked. I mean, we can grind that out and weld it, but yeah. I mean, there's there's some wear. Yeah. And we just had to put all new. Um, suspension cans on the back. That well, was five or six hundred dollars. Trucks like new now. Yeah. Well, we had to to run it through was past winter. Yeah. But the hoist and the cylinders on the wing and stuff. That's that's. Uh, they leaking or are all they... just oils leaking out of them bad. Yeah. TJ had to cut plastic around his wing towers because the oil was blowing on his windshield. At the end of this year, every time he picked his wing up and down, the oil would squirt back onto the windshield. But we take the plow frames off, so they're off for the summer, yep. so it's not a problem now. But. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Yep. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Okay, Black Road Agreement, Class 4. Uh, just uh, briefly want to bring you up to date on the Pentnut Building Permit for uh, putting up here across from my house and I'm looking to get the maintenance agreement widened out and also to see if I can get the town to uh, maybe plow and sand in the winter. The uh, width that I have now, you know, the approved for me now, um, I've had a couple times and this has been a few times throughout the years, I wanted to go home and, and uh, that road is on a GPS and it sends people down there as a shortcut to Northfield. They don't realize that they can't get any farther. And then back years ago, a dead end sign got put up there because if people were going down through and tearing it, tearing the road all up, um, where I couldn't even get home there this winter because someone was stuck, stuck in that, stuck down there. And um, I've always taken sand, like a sand barrel down there, and. People that use that black road use up all the sand, use most of the sand up. And, you know, I use it when it's bad. I, you know, throw a couple yeah. shovels out there. But I'll come home and the whole driver will be sand. I can see where someone was stuck down there. And like I say, you know, it's kind of uh, frustrating when you go to go home and someone's stuck and you got to pull them out of your driveway. And there's been, uh, there was a one other time this winter when I was out of town and my wife couldn't get down in there. So I'd really like to be able to get that widened, uh, my agreement with you guys widened out a little bit and see if um, I can get the town to sand and plow it. And I would, don't really want the grader or anything needs to go down there. But um, I have like a York Rake on my tractor where I've maintained that road for over 20 years. And you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I'd just like to be able to get the 16-foot maintenance agreement that we have widened out to uh, maybe 24 feet or something. 
All right, and, and I, I dropped some um, some paperwork off to Dana back uh, three or four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. that, uh, the zoning, you know, requires a 25 foot width to access property. Um, I don't know where that, you know, where if that is, you know, falls into this issue because it's a 50 foot right of way down there now, and I'm only allowed 16 feet. I don't know why I don't have uh, 25 feet, or you know, why I'm I'm limited to the 50 foot that goes down through there. I'm still, and I'm still having some issues with um, people putting stuff in the drainage there too. You know, throwing brush and debris in the natural course of the water that runs down through there. So it's so maybe you know, and I know I'm not going to get an answer for five meetings or whatever because I've been through this. But I just wish that I could get a little wider down through. So if someone's stuck down there, I can get to my house or get out of my house, and I'm not out there watching somebody digging and pulling and, you know, bitching because they're stuck and me have to get up, get dressed, go out with my truck, pull them out so I'm able to get out of my house. So people get stuck on your road in the wintertime? Yes. Often. Well, Often. The, uh, and, and like what, I say, and then... Button to and, the sign. And, button to the sign. I don't know. It's never there since I've been here. You can't use dead end anymore anyway. It, people don't care about that. I have no trespassing to go down because people were going down. They think that the road was there and they'd get down there and look over and see my house on this side and then see my driveway over to my barn. I have two no trespassing signs because I would, people were always doing it. So, you know, I was getting sick of it. I had stuff stolen down there. I don't know if you know, I had stuff stolen down oh, yeah. there. I put no trespassing signs. They don't care a bit about no trespassing. They don't care a bit about that dead end either. No. Mm -hmm. So I'd just like to be able to maybe get a little bit wider so that I could actually two cars can pass one, one. So when someone gets stuck down there, I can get by them, or at least get back, get to my house. Two, because I'm going to have another family living down there. Probably they'll have two vehicles. My wife and I have vehicles, and we will meet on that road eventually. You know, at some point. There is a there is a choke point there. I've already, I've already killed, you know, because I'm pushed so far to the uh, as you're going down to the left. I've already killed one of those big maple trees, you know, those huge maple trees, you know, 150 year old maple trees that line down that road. And I've already killed one of those trees. And I just would like to stay away. There's plenty of room on the right hand side going down to uh, get it a little wider and take care of uh, some issues that I'm having. Is that is that a class three or four? That's a class four. Class, class four. four. Class four. I thought maybe you, you can class. trade off who's broke yeah. or <laughs> make that a class four. Make it down to my house a class three. I thought your lawyer said it was class three. No, no, it's class four. Okay. No, and it's been uh, research and research and yeah, it's because a class, class four. four is two rods, which is thirty-two foot. No. That road is a 50 foot road. Well, then it ain't class four. Then. On the, uh, the it, field, it's uh, a 50 foot road. I've, I've researched the records here. I, yeah, it's a 50 foot. Or well, it's, it's 50 or 49.5 feet. Yeah. Well, the, the that's three rods then. Yeah, yeah, it's a three rod road, 49.5 feet. So, I mean, some of, some roads are only two rods. Some are. Three, some are even wider. Most of the fours are two. That's yeah. why I thought. Well, that's why I asked if it was three or four. But the thing of it is, it's not required. It's just the way it is. Oh. No, and I'm researching the records here. It's uh, three rod, forty nine point five. You've been up there, right? Where? On his road. You know, and there is a, bit, a little bit of a choke point there where um where there's a pump piece of ledge that sticks out, which um. I'm not sure if maybe with the excavator that can be if it's soft ledge or not, or or I would continue keeping that like a choke point if it's just that one spot where you know you could get by somebody right there, you know. Um, the rest of it I don't see where I couldn't add to be on feet of gravel you. or something or just enough to get by. You. I think I think <coughs> the ledge is pretty soft. 
been I think it's for a while. Right there too. Yeah. Because I I get around it's and got, shovel. It's got a lot there. of cracks in it. The water's worked it. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially if there's a second family that's going to be living down there too, if it is narrow and not accessible, I don't know what how that works. But well, as I told you last year, if if when Wayne and Pete were on the board that if it needed to be plowed, I go to the top of the hill every day. That's my first, when I leave from here, I go right up the top across town and plow and salt the hill up here. And I go down and I turn around at his, on his road. I go down to the corner and turn around and then come back. So it's... It's only about... I, don't, I wouldn't want to stick a 10-wheeler down in there because there would be a little difficulty for them yeah. for turning around. But I can go in there with a 6-wheeler and I'm 4-wheel drive, so I don't, I don't have a problem with plowing it. I'll tell you that right now, so... Because I back down in there when I plow, when I turn plow. around there and yeah. I drop my plowing wing when I come out most of the time. Yeah. What are you? And, the, and the, um, the sand and the sand issue came to uh, almost came to an issue, but I'd already had my barrel had a bunch of sand in it. But when when them in the town saw providing the sand, and then it was down to two buckets of sand you could get. I was getting pretty concerned about a pile of cars down my driveway, or down Black Road and blocking my driveway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I understand if we got to come here again, and my neighbors have to be here, and the whole board has to be here. I, I, you know, I, I've been through this before, having a lot of issues with, with uh, the access to my property within the last few years. When I've been here for over 20, lived down there for over 20 years, had no problem until the last few years, and it's uh, getting very frustrating. And, and one other thing, Dana, when I when I dropped off the paperwork, I dropped off my um, original permit that I was mm -hmm. given, and then it had the two things on there that it said, uh, uh, um, I can't remember, I don't have the paper in front of me about um, approved, you know, it was approved and checked it. You know, they checked off, went through Article 10 and Article 11. Right. Did you see what that was all about? I, mean, I didn't know if you were going to research that and um, see what that was about. What it is, Josh, I mean, they, the zoning board does not have authority over roads. Okay. Um, yeah. And, well, and, the, and I think, the, you know, probably at the time, you explained to them how you were going to take care of the road, and they were satisfied knowing that you could get to your house and emergency vehicles could get to your, get yep. to your house. Yep. Um, yes, so I why did the I, board know that they, why didn't they say, oh no, you need to go to the select board for this? I can't speak for the, a 1997 you know, and then board. Then the <laughs> and also, also back then, I mean, has it been that the select board controlled class four roads? Because I thought it was the road foreman back in the day that gave you permission to use these roads. You had to go through the road foreman. Well, he's the representative for the board, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean. And, you know, and, and Gary Richardson was the sure. representative. Yeah. He came yeah. up. He, I actually I went down. I had to put a culvert in. And, and you know, and, that, and that's back, you know, going back to that I'm having issues with people blocking that mm -hmm. drainage that, that goes to the culvert that the town made me put in. It isn't even going to be able to be used because it's the, it, the water's getting blocked off by mm -hmm. debris and brush. And I guess what I'm saying, Josh, I don't stuff. think the, your zoning um, uh, determination really cements this, oh, what you want. Okay, just yeah, my, no, and I was yeah. just curious on yeah. what that number 10 in Article 10 And, and I have it, too, and I don't mm -hmm. remember. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I was just curious about yeah. that. Yeah. Have you been, like, how is the drainage on that road? There isn't much. Is that for one he's, he's you know what I'm really not looking job. for the town to go down through there and dig a big drainage swale down through the thing, you know, curious. open it up a little bit, make let me get a little bit wider so that two cars can pass. He keeps it shoveled out, but it's pretty hard to keep it shoveled out. What would the cost be to the town if we were to entertain and go forward with what Mr. Walker's proposing? What would it cost the town in well, terms you know, of grub out the edges there a little bit so but 
there's actually, I shouldn't say that, there's actually gravel on the edges, just that it's grown up with grass over the years. It's pretty much gravel on the right. Because I can remember when I was a kid, we used to drive right through there. Well, when I was a kid, we used to drive right through there. Yes, absolutely. My father would go right out through there. Yep. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a big cost. So just some, some labor? Yeah. Because mainly I have, I, you know, because like I've maintained that for 20 years. Right. So it, it's been fine, but now with uh, more, you know, another property going in down there, and people getting stuck down in there, where I can't get to my house without having to pull them out, or like I say, my wife got blocked when I was here in town, mm -hmm. so that was kind of frustrating to me right there. Did the zoning board recently approve <coughs> another unit down there? Is that what you're saying? I Actually, I got a permit. I have a permit. I'm already doing it right now. Did you give me a copy of that one? No, know? because that's been since then, I think. Uh, I don't know when the date was. I think my permit was approved, or, or I can start building on... I'm just a, curious what they, how they address the road in the, in the permit. Did they address it? No. Because I've already got the road in, I've got a driveway. I, the building was already there. I had a like a thirty by sixty barn already built, and I'm putting a living space above it, so it's on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So it's just an apartment above a you know a thirty by sixty. Yeah, and I can I can find out. I can look it up. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe if they can't get access to it, I don't know. In this no, permit uh, that uh, was dated seventh day of September seventeenth, talks about the. Select board retains the authority over the full two rod width of the road. I think that's talking. an error. Oh, yeah, okay. I think it is. Because I know we were talking three before rod. about three yeah. rod, fifty yeah. feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I did notice that it said two mm -hmm. rod here. So yeah, I think that's well, an error. Well, you put your initial driveway into that barn. You must have got to got a driveway permit. Yeah, must have. I have to yeah. look back into my permits and stuff. Or Maybe the Gary zoning board gave me permission then too. I don't know. Select board. I mean, Gary Richardson was the, when you did your culvert. Yeah, I, I can't remember what I, what happened for with the curb cap to go off Black Road on that side. When did you build that building? Oh, twenty years ago. Ten. Well, if it was ten or twelve years, then Tate was here. Yeah, it was Tate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was Tate, and he could, and as a matter of fact, he came down and looked at and didn't need any culvert. It, it, it's refreshing me now. It didn't need any culvert. Yeah, it didn't doesn't need, need a culvert because the, yeah, no, because it runs off it's, before. Yeah, it's higher than yeah. See, it's the side the on where my house goes, where you go to my house, is yeah, where I had to put the culvert yeah. across Black Road. Yeah, because if it was then, that would have been Tate. Yeah, it was Tate. Was here before me. Yeah, Gary Richardson's place. Yeah, well, Gary was the road foreman when I did my house, and yeah. he was the one that I had to put the culvert in for, you know, to get my curb cut to my house. And then, yeah, Tate, yeah, he came down and there was nothing needed. So the board had to sign the curb cut then, right? No, you sign curb cuts. Mm -hmm. If the road foreman okays them like tonight. Yeah. Well, she was getting a permit to work in the road right away, right? But it wasn't a curb cut. No, she was getting a driveway. Yeah. Yeah. Widening yeah. yeah. the uh, yeah. access to the road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, where do I go from here? Well, if you've got the, if you've got the paperwork, give it to Dana. I've got most of his paperwork, and I can look up the latest approval for his living unit right in the barn. Am I, am I thinking yeah, the right I, place? Yeah, I got the permit right here on my, on my, uh, in my email, on my phone here, so I can. I can look it up, you Josh. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll do that and bring it to you. Um, uh, or you can just email it to all of us. Okay. Save a tree. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and then we can have a chance. To read and then what? And then so. And what's the deal with the um, uh, the zoning? You have to have twenty five feet access to a property but what was the deal there remember that other paperwork i dropped for you to uh i'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm not i'm not with no, you I'm right sorry. now i'm just yeah i'll give you the paperwork i have so i know i have approach, yeah. approach you know approach the board with it i will so i will put it in a package and, and email it to them 
Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And I can email it to you too if you'd like to just see what they got. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whichever. Okay. Do I have your email? Uh, not sure. Okay. So maybe you can write it for me. So. Sure. So I don't have or to. Or you want it's Josh Dot Walker. I may have it. Okay. I, yeah, I, I think you. May Josh Dot Walker at something. At my fair point, not Thank you. Yeah. You may have it. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Okay. Much appreciated. So, um, agenda next meeting. Are you getting full yet? What's that? <laughs> the agenda. Um, it's going to be full, but if you, I can put it on. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. You too. Good night. Okay. Hazard mitigation project, Dana? Um, we discussed that a little bit at your last meeting about the survey that is going to be going out to the community. And I've been asked if we could, the board would do a motion. Uh, the town of Berlin is updating its hazard mitigation plan and community input is an important part of the planning process. A short survey is available at the town office and the residents and business owners in town are invited to complete and submit back to the town by August 1st, 2019. And that's at the suggestion of our consultant, Paul Luciano. So, so <laughs> Oh, excellent. Right. Do hear a second? A second. Please. Any further, any further, <laughs> any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. It's one of my housekeeping issues. Um, okay, <laughs> approval of select board's minutes for 5 2 and 5 8 of 2019. Um, I don't think you can do the second um, because you're, you're short, yeah. So the first one, I'll bring back to you the next time. The first one we can. Well, the second year, uh, Angelina wasn't oh, the here, oh, that's right. and, wasn't here. Uh, and Justin wasn't here, yeah. and Jeremy was here, but he's not here. Yes. Well, he wasn't here, but he was on the phone. Mm -hmm. And for Wednesday, May 8th. I make a motion we accept the minutes of Wednesday, May 8th. 2019. Second motion. Sorry. At the school meeting. I know, I still haven't learned that yet. Yeah. Okay, uh, motion carries. Uh, we'll want an abstention and um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Thank you very much, Dan. I make a motion that we approve the general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G23 with checks 19106 to 19134 in the amount of $46,181.96, along with the payroll warrant number 19-23 for payroll from April 28, 2019 to May 11, 2019 in the amount of $40,890.88. This also includes the April Reconciled Bank Statements for the General Fund Sewer Commission and Water Division, April General Journal Entries, and April Tax Administration. Second that. Thank you. All those, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And... Town Administrator's report, Dana. Um, yes, I I want you to know I won't be here tomorrow. I'll be in St. Albans learning how to be a town administrator. <laughs> Good for um, you. So <laughs> it's the, the second day of our municipal managers conference, so I will be I won't be in the office tomorrow. Um, we also received notice this week from Better Roads 
um, regarding a grant that we got for the work to be done for the municipal general road permit, road general permit, I guess it, it is, uh, for the a hydrologically connected sections or segments, yeah. segments. I'm going to look, get it all together. Um, and that would be done by Dan Courier at the Regional Planning Commission. But we did, we did yeah, receive they that. They got a deadline on that? Um, we have to begin work as soon as possible. He's got, he did call me today and say he's got the wrong date on here, but it's July 1, 2019. And That's it has to be completed. Date. Yeah, because he put 18 in here. Um, and it has to be completed by the end of December. Of 19? No, 20. So, oh. so we, we're fine. Because last year when he went around with us, he said it had to be done by June this year. Well, that's not what this letter says. Yeah, okay. But, and, but I will check. I mean, we've got a lot of it. You've lot, done a lot. I've and, done a lot already. And he's but. done the preliminary with us. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was a good um, um, bit of news. Um, back to the town center designation. I had an idea that it might be good to get, and I might have mentioned this last time, all the boards together to um, meet all as a board and talk about it so that everyone knows, understands what is happening. And I'd like to do that in June, and I thought I might ask for it on a Wednesday night, maybe at the Grange, okay. something like that, if that sounds like something you'd be amenable to. Sure. Um, it would also be nice while everyone's there to, I've thought for some time it would be very helpful for committees to hear from the league regarding how meetings are noticed and minutes are kept, et cetera, et cetera. We, with the right to know law, we're supposed to be doing all that all record the keeping. And, and the committees, you know, they're volunteers, and sometimes it doesn't happen quite the way it's supposed to. And I'm not criticizing any of them. Um, I also have um, two copies of the, the League's news, if anyone would like to read that. I don't know if you get that by email from the League or, or anything like that. Um, would it be appropriate at that meeting for the, any of these developers to be there no, for okay. the Thank town you. center piece? Just to kind of see. I think that... Um, sure. Like Heidenberg. You know, um, I was going to invite Heidenberg. Street. You know, um, obviously they're a big partner with the town center. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have, Brad. Okay. Any executive session? Yes, please. Under personnel. Okay. Um, let's see here. Thank you. Thank you.